welcome back to the shop everybody. This evening I'm going to start on what I hope should be a fairly quick project and that is to replace what you see in front of you here. And this is, apart from the tripod that the camera is currently on, what I've been using to film all of my videos in the workshop. It's nothing more than a piece of scrap lumber with a fluid head, I think it was like a $40 head I got from B&H mounted to it. And how I would move it around the shop would be I had several blocks like this just mounted into the wall and I would just take a, a quick, you know, Irwin quick clamp like this and clamp it in place. Now, as you can imagine, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, clamping force. There's not a whole lot of adjustment. It was kind of clunky. And when you've got your digital SLR on there and a preamp and a microphone and everything else and expensive lenses, it doesn't always make you feel the most comfortable. So I had started a project a month ago that ultimately ended up not working and I'll explain why when I get this other part. Uh, when I get these other parts off the bench over here. So let me go and grab them and I'll show you guys what I'm going to replace this with. For over by the mill, this is what's going to be used going forward. This is a boom arm, a regular, you know, it's designed for camera gear that you would normally use to hold like an off-camera flash or like a, um, a shotgun microphone or something like that. And the benefits of it are is that the arm can be extended out and then rotated around. You can't see because it's off camera. You can get about five feet total. This little pin, which he has in frame, can be pulled out. And it can be stuck on the bottom or it can be stuck on this end here. And it's got, it's threaded 3 8 16 or a quarter 20, depending on how you need to mount your camera gear. And then the other benefit is, is if you loosen this arm here, you can extend it up to almost vertical and you can extend it down to almost completely down. So you get height adjustment, and in and out adjustment. This one's gonna be fairly simple. It's basically mounted up and put the camera on it. Let me grab the other stuff I'm gonna use going forward for the lathe, and that will require a little modification. For over at the lathe, I purchased two of these, which probably don't look like much, so let me open them up. Um, this is a heavy duty, or in my opinion, it's a heavy duty, articulating arm used to mount your, a television or a, a, TV, or a computer monitor to a wall. And this is where I'm going to talk about the project that I had started a month ago that ultimately didn't work. So really all this is is just, you know, some rectangular tubing with some, you know, round tubing welded to both ends. And then they've got mounts, you know, some, some kind of you know, pivoting tube or pivoting arm through the middle of it that it just rotates around and you've just got washers. These are um, plastic, I think, and that could be nylon, you know, that, that holds it down. Now they also make several arms like this that are basically, they don't have a top and a bottom. They just have a bottom one and then they have this arm that pivots off. I had designed one like this myself. These arms were about 18 inches instead of like 11, which is what these are. So they were quite a bit longer. This one was gonna be just as long. And where my design failed was because I had used two inch by one inch hex, or yeah, rectangular tubing, not hex tubing. And um, one inch um, diameter DOM tubing. And what I had done is, once I got them all welded together, to guarantee that my bore was, you know, nice and round again, because, you know, if you weld something like that, a piece of thin wall tubing, it's going to egg shape on you. So I bored it out, and basically the tubing became 60 thousandths of an inch, roughly, in um, wall thickness. And after putting them together and started playing with them, testing them, what I quickly noticed, though, is if you put any amount of weight on the arms that far out, what would happen is on the top and bottom of the joint, there was enough leverage and pressure that I'm not sure which mechanical property of the steel I over, you know, was overwhelmed, but essentially you would get the for deformation of the arm or the tubing above the joint and below the joint, and you'd also got quite a bit of bad galling. In my opinion, I, I think that would be, I basically just overcame the, the, the compressibility of the steel, because what would happen is it would just compress and it would basically mushroom inwards and outwards to the point I couldn't even get the arm, the actual pin that I had through it, out. So the design was scrapped and instead of trying to buy a bunch of more steel and redoing it myself, I decided to just buy these camera arms that should have been designed by somebody else and purchased by a bunch of people and it actually was quite a bit cheaper. I got all of these on Amazon. I'll give links to them you know, in my blog. These arms were on sale for $22 and then the articulating um, boom arm that's actually you know designed for camera gear, I think was $50. So for like $95 delivered to my door, 
I have three mounts, one for the mill and then two for over by the lathe. So to prep these, you know, all this stuff's got to go away. So we can start off by taking off, you've got some plastic wire organizers, which I'm not going to need. Those can be put to the side. They've got a vanity cover here for the wall mount. That can come off. I should add that these are probably actually overkill. You could probably get even cheaper ones for like, I saw some as low as like 10 bucks. These are heavy duty. Supposedly these are designed to support up to a 99 pound television. And I don't know about you, I, I have my television. I have a 55 inch and it doesn't weigh 99 pounds, but I still wouldn't want to mount it with this. It would make me uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, there's two more studs that are pressed in. So, yeah, this will work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cut up some pieces of scrap wood that I can mount to this. And that's what I actually have, let me grab them. Um, I've actually got, these are just little ball heads with some uh, Arca Swiss plates on them. I'm going to use one of these on the uh, arm for over by the mill, and I'll use one of these for the lathe as well. And then I'm going to repurpose the, tri the, uh, the fluid head for the other one. So let me go cut up some blocks of wood. Okay, back over here at the bench. Let's get these mounted up. So these are just some pre-drilled holes because this is hard maple. And if you don't pre-drill at least a little bit, there's a good chance that you will snap the head off most screws. These are just some one inch length square drives. I might have to switch out the battery there. Did that literally just die? Apparently so. Let's grab a different battery. Okay, so those are mounted up. Next step is going to be to clear a spot on the wall so I can mount these two over by the lathe. While making space in the wall by the lathe, I realized I needed a way to mount a shelf support and an arm side by side. To accomplish this, I milled down some scrap ash to make a backer board. Here you can see I'm drilling some holes in the back of board for one quarter inch lag bolts that will be used to secure it to the wall.
as I thought, last night I wasn't able to finish up everything. And actually it was because I didn't have enough um, material, this is ash, and it's because I stopped and picked a piece up on the way home from work today, to actually mount the mounting plate because the boom arm is actually, has a really wide bolt hole pattern. So you can't mount it to a single stud. So I just picked up another piece of lumber and I'll mount this up now. So before I go inside for the evening, I thought I'd show you guys the range of motion that these mounts have. So I'll start here at the lathe. So down here in the lower one, I've got one of my old cameras just mounted up. I can, you know, set it off way back here like this if I need some kind of long range shot. I can move it in through the right here. Close down here and get within maybe 15, 18 inches of the, of the chuck. And I can come straight out like this and look right down the bed of the lathe. And if I mount it up top here, I can kind of do the same thing. I can't get quite as far away. Uh, but I like to take shots down from above. But the main reason for this one is I like shots that kind of are right down directly over the chuck. And I can do that with this mount. Let me go over to the, the mill and I'll show you that setup because that one I'm really happy with. Over here at the mill, I'm really happy with this arm because as you can see, I can get in way closer with the camera than I'm actually ever going to get with, you know, a nice interchangeable lens camera because I don't want to potentially damage the lenses. But I can get shots like this. I can, well, there's an old camera, so it doesn't matter. Um, I could pull it back here. I can, put this back out. I can swing it over here. And if I want to, I can lift it up. And I can say, shoot straight down at something over top of the bench, like if I was working over here at the bench. And if I don't ever picture myself doing this, I can even, I extend it all the way out, lock it down, and raise it up. I can get the camera pretty much all the way to the ceiling, so I could take like panoramic shots if I wanted to, but I don't picture myself doing that. Overall, it's probably gonna be a lot of shots like this in here in here somewhere. But as I said, I'm really happy with this. I probably should have just gone with this to start with. It would have been cheaper and a lot faster to set up.